Coach Sue, good morning to everyone. On this uh, wonderful day for marathon running, as Matt Taylor said, perfect conditions. The women's race, first off, the elite race, 45 minutes later, the uh, mass race, rather. They are the athletes to watch in this women's race. Margaret Akayo, Kenya, Dina Kasta, Konstantina Tomescu, Dita Petrova from Russia, Susan Chetkamai from Kenya, Mara Yamayuchi carrying the flag for Great Britain, Selena Koskai, Berhan Adire, Hayakawa Bogomolova, and Berhan Dagny from Great Britain as well. Well, this year, in the elite races, all of the star names have been given different kit to wear for the first time. Let's uh, go down some of the names, and of course, the big ones will have their name on their vest as well. There's Margaret Akeo, former winner of the New York Marathon and the London Marathon, of course. Dina Castor, perhaps a favorite from America, Olympic bronze medalist, wearing the black and red vest, and then next to her, Bogomolova, Konstantina Tomescu Dita from Romania. She will be right up there early on, we'd expect. Petrova standing there just having a look at her watch. Susan Chepkemai standing next to her. There's Petrova, 37 years of age now. Very, very consistent, particularly here in London. Be a surprise though, she got in amongst the uh, first one or two. Susan Chepkemai. Hugely experienced, of course, remember that epic race she had with Paula Radcliffe in New York last year. Could figure again today. And then next to her was, in the absence of Paula Radcliffe, Britain's number one marathon runner this year, Mara Yamauchi. And she's having a fantastic 12 months or so. Her best time set in Tokyo last year, 2.27.30. Very much under threat here. So perfect conditions, really, for marathon running. Sebco are ready to set them on the way. Where they go. The women's elite race, 2006. And they head up Shooters Hill Road. Big crowds, as usual, down at the start. And we'll be talking about the men's race uh, when we get closer to that fantastic field gathered in the men's race but i think this women's race is uh, really intriguing as well we've got two three women who are perhaps on the verge of going sub 220 for the first time dina caster certainly amongst them one or two others with a huge experience could well figure and as i said be really interested to see how mara yamauchi goes won a bronze medal in the commonwealth games over 10,000 meters just last month and really looking here for the This is a very competitive women's field. We've got some outstanding athletes here who've won marathons all across the world, in the big cities particularly. We've got athletes, the good news is, from Great Britain. Mara Yamauchi, who lives in Japan now and is running back here in London where she started training many, many years ago with Bob Parker, who's got the privilege today. He was Dave Bedford's coach back in the 70s. He's got the privilege today of being on the lead bike. And after many, many years, he says he's never had the VIP treatment of the London Marathon. But now, because he coaches Mara Yamauchi, he's now on the lead bike, looking forward to watching the dramas unfold in this women's marathon. It is the women's elite race, but you may well have noticed the sharp-eyed amongst you this early in the morning. One or two men starting, and they are the pacemakers. All the records these days. Well, we've had uh, years when we've had women's only races and mixed races, but the men are given the chance to uh, give the women every opportunity to get a fast time here. And the pacemakers will be wearing the white vests and blue shorts in uh, both of the elite races. Uh, we've got quite a few of them involved uh, for athletes wanting to run at slightly different paces and it's becoming a almost an exact science now as to how exactly how fast you want to go through the first half of the race some athletes prefer to set out quicker and try and hang in with the pace others looking to run negative splits that means the second half of the race is faster than the first half so uh, the elite athletes themselves have put in their requests and have been provided with pacemakers by london marathon dave bedford and his team trying to accommodate everybody's wishes where possible and the athletes whose 
details we know all about. The athletes who came here having trained very hard and having run very well in the past immediately settled down at the front. And the leader there in the blue vest, Susan Chepkamai of Kenya, on the inside there in the red, that's Mara Yamauchi on the inside there. And just ahead of her, Constantina Dina Tomescu of Romania. Right behind her, there's Petrova in the blue vest. And Dina Casta, who many people think is the favorite, just behind her in the cap. The two male pacemakers there, who've been asked by the London Marathon to deliver a good solid pace for this women's event. They're aiming for about two hours and 20 minutes, which is staggering when you look at the personal best of these people. But these days, the pressure is such on times and the demand is such by these women's runners that unless they're elite runners themselves, they need men to set the pace. So that's an interesting development in itself. This was already arranged for Paula Radcliffe. Fields at this event today is her opportunity to win one and such an effect. She's brought her mother over to watch her from Kenya. Her mother's never been outside of Kenya, and Susan persuaded her to come and watch her and said, I think I've got a chance, Mum. Come and watch me. And her mum's in the grandstand at the finish, waiting for a couple of hours now to see her daughter. I hope she's got the information. I hope she's able to watch this um, race in the grandstand at the finish to see her daughter following the two pacemakers, looking good and running strong. You're always keeping the mums happy, you, aren't you? That's what I like about you. I hope she's got something to cheer today. And Susan Chepkamai, quite eager in these early stages. If you're not too familiar with the course, there are actually three starts for the London Marathon. Obviously, the elite women will be running very much on their own. They have a 45-minute start, if you like, on the mass race. But they start on the blue start, and then we have a green start and a red start, which is where most of the runners... fairly quick it's all sort of downhill towards the river thames in the early stages so they've just gone through the first mile and uh, we'll give you an indication of the pace shortly well the elite women's race is underway and if you want to only follow Uh, he's the main pacemaker, if you like. And then alongside him, we've got uh, McKeeman. And uh, if uh, Tara starts to fade a little, then he can take over. So we said as well, Susan Chepkamai, one of the most experienced marathon runners on the world scene. Silver medals at three World Half Marathon Championships and at the Commonwealth Games back in Manchester. But pretty much since 2002, she's concentrated on the roads. And she should never, ever be written off. She sometimes struggles to win the big ones. New York in 2004 after the Olympic Games. All came down to the last couple of hundred metres or so on that day. Well, the lead group there were looking down the road, and the second group were looking for Britain's first athlete as the leaders go through the first, the third mile there in 503. Well, that's the fastest mile of the, the race so far, but it's quite downhill at that point. That's the probably going to be the, one of the fastest miles of the whole event. And there's the chasing group. Included in that chasing group, Constantina Tomescu Dita, Mara Yamuchi, Great Britain, Petrova there as well. But the, their second group, you can see four pe male pacemakers as you look at Burhan Adiri. But here's the leader through the 5K point, athletes looking at their watches. They want the information, they need the information. They're very, very scientifically or oriented these days. There they've gone through. You saw the mats there, that's the five kilometer point, and Susan Chepkamai in the blue vest of Kenya. She looks as though she really wants to be involved here. She really wants to be moving this pace along. Selena Koskai of Kenya in the yellow vest behind her, and Dina Castor of the United States, now running alongside her training partner. Well, that's interesting. Her, the pace, the male pacemaker there, that's Mike McKeeman, and he's the training partner of Dina Castor. So that's a brilliant advantage for her to be able to run alongside someone who she spends her time training with. Susan Chepkamai just ahead of her, but these three are running a pace which is going to bring them close to 2 hours 20 minutes. And let's be honest, none of them have broken 2 hours 20 minutes, and this is a bit ambitious. However, we have got very good conditions here today. We've got great distance running conditions for these leading athletes. 
It's not so good for the spectators, and it's not so good if you're going to be out there for four or five hours, but it's perfect for these leaders. Yeah, down the serious business there through five miles in a very, very good time of 26 minutes and 30 seconds, which is sub two hours 20 pace. So three of them, these three athletes, none of them have run at this pace before. None of them have run under two hours 20. They've got good conditions to help them do it. They've got good male pacemakers to drag them along at the right sort of pace and Dina Castor, the American bronze medalist in the Olympic Games in the cap there on the inside she's very, very lucky indeed, she's got a training partner there for company and that is a that is a great bonus for her, so she'll be comfortable running alongside him Susan Chepkamai in the blue vest had a little bit of a problem at the water station couldn't find a drink, which she was a bit disconcerted a bit, a bit upset about and she was, um, so I'm not sure that's a I, I'm sure she'll be hoping that at the next water station her own specialised drink will be there and on the yellow vest there the Commonwealth 10,000 metre champion from 2002 in Manchester Selena Koskai who out sprinted Susan Chepkamai in that of that race it was a rapidly can't think he can hear it to you what did you slip on the road there you go uh, probably the white line I think the paint on the white line if any of you have uh, ever ridden a bike on wet conditions you know what that feels like so just a bit unfortunate there for Selena Koskai, but as you can see, she's back with Chet Kamai and Dina Castor very, very quickly. And sometimes when you catch up that quickly, Brent's not a good thing. Yeah, but Steve, you know yourself that these training shoes, some of them have really firm grips, and some, sometimes the rubber on them is slightly different, and sometimes you know yourself when you're just out running in them slowly, as we do these days. <laughs> Even so, when the road's wet, they, some of them are, are, are really slippy, and others of them are pretty much better. Well, that was a, 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 an unfortunate circumstance. I hope she doesn't, hasn't done herself any serious damage. She didn't look as though she had done, and the leading group of three women now, 34 minutes of running behind them, going through the Cutty Sark area, the crowd's beginning to gather here, and soon, not very long now, 10 minutes' time, we'll be seeing the main mass race commence, and then the crowd will be huge when we get to this point. But the three women running faster than they've ever run before. Selena Koskai of Kenya has done very, very well to close that gap, and hopefully she's not in too much trouble. Susan Chepkamai of Kenya in the blue vest. She was delighted there to get a drink because she was a bit upset when she didn't get a drink at the 5k point. And maybe the drink stations need to be just... Round about a five minute spin, really too close for that. Dina Castor thinks she can run that pace, she doesn't know that. So it's a bit of a risk, high risk strategy that uh, they're taking here. Particularly, I think, from perhaps Selena Kosko. Brendan was saying that she uh, had a very good victory over Czech Kamai in the half marathon distance, but that's only half the story, obviously. And and she's decided to go with this uh, quick early pace. She didn't want to be left in the second group. They were quite a way distant. And I think that's a problem, Brent, isn't it? When, when there aren't as many, I guess, uh, the, the spread is, is such as it, it is in uh, this year's race, where you either go with the very front group and take the risk, or you sit back with the, uh, the second group and hope the leaders come back to you. Well, she's gone for the, the first strategy there. It's a risky one. The first strategy is to run under two hours, 20 minutes for the marathon. The second strategy, the chasing group is around about 2 hours 24 for this marathon. And I was just going to say earlier about the marathon is always an event where you see the drama. Well, already we've seen minor drama. The women's race, well, Dina Castor and Susan Chepkamai are still pushing on. And uh, the pace is just uh, varying a little. The 11th mile was a little slow, but that 12th mile, 514, and the effect it's had is that Selena Koskai has gone off the back. And uh, well, we said Brendan was high risk uh, strategy, particularly for Koskai, because he's not as, as experienced as these two in the marathon, and they're maybe paying for that inexperience. And perhaps even the when she had that little slip and had to make up the ground quickly as well. But uh, she's well distant from these two. It's still high risk strategy, it's trying to run under two hours, 20 minutes for the marathon. We've seen Sel Selena Koskai drop off that field. We've got Peter Elliott on the back of the motorbike. Peter, can you hear me and can you tell us what you saw happen there? I can, the last few miles. I can go. Good, mor good morning, Brendan. I can go. Uh, as we were just approaching mile 12, Koskai began to fall off the pace a little bit. Initially just five metres, but now she must be 50, 60 metres adrift. Uh, the conditions down here, obviously it's being to rain a little bit more than, than earlier on, but the two, two leads, Castor and Chep Kermai, look very, very comfortable with the pace makers. You can't tell from that position, Peter, whether there's been any problem that she's had from the fall that she had at the previous water station? No, no not at all. When we were at the side of her at the, at, the, at the station, she did slip and she did seem to knock herself on the actual table where the drinks are, which uh, could have knocked her up a little bit. 
But uh, she didn't appear to be limping at any point. I think it's probably just the early pace has caught up with her. coming through very very quickly or shortly for that still in that group going well with the leaders across tower bridge the big crowds will start to gather there's dina castle just crossed that map there you saw giving the 20k split the halfway mark will be the next benchmark they pass the two of them now with a, what looks like about a 20 second lead or so we'll see it shortly from uh, selena koskai well 17 seconds and Koskai going further and further back fairly quickly indeed and she's going to have to see whether when the group behind her undoubtedly will catch her whether she's able to pick up again and go with them whoever that happens to be so the leaders across Tower Bridge are now eyeing the halfway mark and then we'll get another indication of just how quickly they're going Brendan they're still operating inside 220 will they keep it up? Well they've neither of them ever run faster than 2 hours 20 it's a fabulous time these days, even though Paula Radcliffe's world record is 2 hours 15 minutes, that was done here a few years ago, but we see the two athletes, the Olympic bronze medalist Dina Castor in the cap, running alongside a, the pacemaker who's a training partner. If I was Susan Chepkam, I would have asked if I could bring my training partner to run, because the, the top women athletes often train with the men, and I think that's a real advantage, and it's a wise decision. She's a very clever athlete, Dina Castor. She knows exactly what she's doing, and there she is, running like she does in training, right next to her training partner. That's um, Mike Mc McKeeman, and he's there right alongside her. And then in between the two athletes in the lead, Selena Koskai, 17 seconds down on those two and falling away from the, the leading group. These athletes operating extremely well, being well guided. It's a rather dump morning for the spectators, but it's a great morning for distance runners. We're looking down, we're seeing if we can see the chasing athletes, and there's this. Brendan was saying with her uh, training partner, pacemaker there in the front, and there's another couple of, uh, she was saying, enthusiastic spectators. It uh, really doesn't help, to be honest. Well, two leaders following the two pacemakers, Dina Cass. through 25k in a very quick time 122.36 and that means that the pace is still being maintained Susan Chetkamai just at that drink station as we've seen before struggling to find her drink and in so doing just losing three or four meters and uh, certainly Castor's looking very relaxed very much in control still operating in fact a little bit quicker than they were three or four miles back they've come down to uh, closer to 219 pace and given that um, Castor certainly looks strong and another three or four miles at this sort of pace, Brendan, and that 220 mark will start to look a little bit more realistic. She's running very sensibly. I do feel there's a slight advantage there running with a training partner. But these are the two leaders. She's now struggling a little bit there, but Dina Castor following her training partner, beginning to pull away from Susan Chepkamai. Susan Chepkamai has got a lot of second places on her records but Dina Castor the Olympic bronze medalist the first American to win a medal at the Olympic Games in the marathon since the original women's marathon when, when that was won by Joan Benoit and she's become an extremely popular figure in America she's really got a big following there she's run well her personal best time of 2 hours 21 was set behind Paula Radcliffe in London and surprisingly it was her that won the Olympic medal rather than Paula Radcliffe I'm very interested in that little bit of information, Steve. Her favourite dish is steak and a gorgonzola sauce. Well, no, I, I, could, I could quite fancy that. No, it's, you know that that's an American. They put cheese on everything. How can you have... No, oh, never mind. Cheese sauce on a steak, please. I think that's just because you don't like cheese. I know, never mind. Well, she has a little glance behind. She's doing very well, looking uh, extremely relaxed and whatever... Uh, Whatever target she was setting, I think this would...
the system from Custer. This can be a part of the race where you start to lose it a little bit. A little wobble there from Custer. But um, she's clicking the miles off at a very consistent rate and pulling away further from Czech Command. There uh, you can see Dina Custer looking strong, looking comfortable, having a very well assisted ride here, a training partner right next to her. And there you can see now fading into the distance in second place. Susan Chepkamai of Kenya. And the inter interesting news was that the chasing group have now moved into third place. They've overtaken Selena Koskai, who was in contention with these two in the early stages. And now the calculating style of the... Side 219 pace, and we'll put her right up there on the all-time list. This is phenomenal running. 220 is still a huge barrier for women marathon runners to break through. And... Dina Castor set a stall out today to break that barrier. I think she probably knew if she could do that, if she could run that sort of race, she would certainly win the race. I don't think she would have expected too much company. Chep Kamai has done her best, running well inside her personal best as well. But Chep Kamai now suffering. It'll be interesting to see whether the chasing group, having already hauled in Koskai, can start to make inroads into the lead that Chet Kamai has on them as well. Dina Castor, just a little bit of a wince there for the first time. And looking back, she doesn't really need to at all. She needs to just now concentrate on keeping her form. She's got lots of help there from her training partner. You can see there, Mike McKeeman, wearing 130. And Henry Taras, the two of them have done a good job. I'm just uh, wondering at what time, uh, at what point they pull away. I hope they're going to run all the way to the, uh, the finish line with her. There was, there was some controversy, Brendan, in there. When she won in Chicago ahead of uh, Constantina Tomescu Dita, she started to fade in the last few miles. So we have to be very, uh, I suppose, wary of that happening again. And Tomescu Dita claimed that uh, Castor was getting uh, undue help from uh, male pacemakers on, on that day. But um, this is what's been set up for her. But the interesting thing there, Steve, is she'll know that she was fading in the last three miles in, in Chicago. She was really struggling. She only ended up five seconds ahead of of Constantina Tomescu Dita and there she is there just checking her own time just having an I, I admire the way she approaches these things she's very meticulous she gradually stepped up in distance she was good at 10,000 meters she was good on the country she then ran 10 miles and 15 kilometers and gradually all worked through together to produce America's outstanding female marathon runner the best one since Joan Benoit the only medalist since Joan Benoit in the Olympic Games and that was again an effort in Athens where she calculated the pace she set off extremely slowly and was closing down very quickly at the end but she did it right now when she tried to run quickly in Chicago she faded in the last three miles when she runs slowly she can run on strongly in the last three miles now today I just wonder I just wonder if she's going to be strong enough to keep going she's at the moment on schedule for close to two hours 19 minutes and that's just a shade faster than she anticipated the London Marathon is a great race in the later stages she's got better weather conditions than she anticipated she's got perfect assistance from her training partner and pacemaker so everything is set up for Dina Castor to want to run one of the great marathons she's managed to get rid of the field so now it's up to her it's up to her to concentrate on her own performance the pacemakers are doing a fantastic job for her and she's really appreciative of that i know and then you can see down the you look down the road behind her susan chepkamai in second place still hasn't come into sight so dina castor pulling away looking good and looking strong very well but uh, just a little bit of picture breaker through the high buildings around the canary wharf area and uh, Support on the road starting to gather. I know it's a, a rainy day, and a few people perhaps who might have gone out to watch are probably sitting watching it on TV. But uh, you can see the big crowds there. This used to be a pretty dead part of the course in terms of support, but uh, not now. And Castor increasing her lead all the time, maintaining the pace, and clicking off the miles. As Brendan was saying, can she hold it together over the last three or four? She just looks a little bit more dead leg to me than she, she did a mile or two back. And she's uh, got her eyes firmly fixed on the back of Mike McKeeman. Which she will have done, I guess, many times in training as well. And making sure that uh, she doesn't let... And he keeps pointing out, doesn't he, the mile marks just there so she's aware. 
And Dan uh, says, right, we've just gone through, I presume that's 19 miles. I'll uh, check shortly what the time is. Well, I'm just looking at the last couple of miles, Steve. Fantastic pacemaking by a trading partner and fantastic running by Dina Castor. 5.17 for the last mile. 5.16 for the one before that. 5.17 for the one before that. 5.16 for the one before that. And 5.18, then 5.14. So this is beautifully consistent running. And the time after... of information comes through there's the second place athlete and there's the time so that's one two hours 19 minutes pace and there is a lonely figure of susan shepkamai it seems a little unfair that dina cast has got two pacemakers a training partner and a kenyan athlete and that susan shepkamai is trying to run the path her personal best and she's absolutely isolated on her own and seriously going through a difficult patch because the chasing group are starting to race one another there's three of them in the chasing group behind behind Castor and behind Chip Kamai. So the race for first looks to be, be between her and the road, be between her and how much she can keep applying. But she looks as though she's running very sprightly as we watch the lead women going through now back of the... behind her. She set herself up very well here for one of the best performances ever by a female marathon runner and is still moving very nicely indeed. Oh, look at that. She has to have the drink. Oh, Dina. Well, a pacemaker, he's been pointing everything out for her all the way and he now looks like he's struggling, to be honest. He's behind her and, uh, well, he's done his job. He might as well stop, to be honest, because he's not able to keep with her 35k 155 and 40 and 33 oh, excuse me 43 seconds that's still around 219 if she can keep this pace going as i said that 220 mark still within her sights a lot of the athletes have been having trouble with the feed stations but i think it's probably the when you're in the zone and you're running like she is she probably needs a bit of advice and a bit of warning or she's got pacemakers there i know strictly speaking they're not supposed to help her other than setting a pace but you would have thought that a a training partner would have just given her a yell because it's so important at this stage to get the electrolyte drinks and get the, the carbohydrate fluids inside you because that's what keeps you going when the body runs out of fuel if you can refuel by using these modern gels you can often just keep up going in the later stages so Dina Castor there a little bit of a she looked at her wrist there I think she hurt her wrist but she, again when she stopped quickly she slid on the road and that that's a little bit unfortunate. Hopefully she's gathered her, her concentration, but now the Kenyan pacemaker is doing the job. There's still a big gap back to uh, the chasing group there, so Chef uh, Kamai holding it together, and Custer, to be honest, doing more than that, still pushing on. Well, she wasn't a bit disturbed from that little slip at the, um, at the feed station. She's got a good lead, she's got a significant lead, but she looks as though she's running even stronger. We're still looking for the second place athlete to get a better shot and a better closer up because the chasing group, the two Russians in that chasing group are running and now racing. Bogomolova was looking and making progress. That's the overhead shot of the leader, Dina Kasta. And now she's very welcoming of the Kenyan athlete who's pacing her. He's doing a good job for her is Henry Taras. Her training partner was really helpful, but he's really tired now. But I'm not surprised. She's running two hours 19 pace, and she looks to be full of energy. She's driving hard when she needs to. She's closing that gap. It almost seems at will so seriously. This is an outstanding performance. Two hours on the clock now. She's into the last 20 minutes of this marathon. She'll be needing the support that she'll get from the roadside. The numbers in these conditions, these weather conditions, are outstanding on the roadside. Well, Brenda, she really is moving well. This is uh, around the tower, and uh, the great thing about when you get to the tower is that you then start to move up to the embankment. You start to see the London Eye, you start to see Big Ben, and suddenly the finish doesn't seem so far away. She is moving very well indeed. Taras has uh, managed to maintain the pace, but uh, her training partner has not been able to stay with her. And, Caster using Taras 
to keep pouring this on now. She's through the 22 mile mark. She's still heading for inside 220. But the only question mark, this is the part of the race where Casta has let it slip in the past. Certainly in Chicago, she was uh, going quick and then faded in the last two, three miles. Will it be different for her today? Can she keep this pace going? Can she keep pushing on? First time we've seen a little bit of distress perhaps in the face. Steely stare from the American. Concentration. Gabri Selassie, Martin Lell, Limo, Ramala, Rogers Roth is still in there as well, pacemakers still operating at a fast pace, they've just slipped slightly away from world record pace but certainly still in the 2.5 range and uh, well with uh, so many good athletes still there they could yet pick it up but Brendan, Tina Custer through 25 miles looking good. Absolutely amazing run there, Steve. There's only Paula Radcliffe ever run faster than Dina Castor's run here. And when you think about it, some people think the London Marathon course is not all that good. Well, Paula Radcliffe's run four of the fastest times of all time. And here now, Dina Castor is going to run close to the fastest, second fastest ever. Only Paula Radcliffe has ever run faster. And the men's race, there we are, Hailey Gebri's last. Second or so, so Joseph, uh, rather interestingly, um, I'm sure he's not going to make it the whole way. Let's just keep an eye on it, though. Well, was, it? was Fabiano Joseph leading in the men's race? He's supposed to be the pacemaker, like Steve said. But here is Dina Casta, the American Olympic bronze medalist, running along Birdcage Walk, running so strongly, running controlled. Looks as though she's got everything in hand. Two hours, 16 minutes on the clock. And this is an amazing performance by Dina Castor, the athlete who gradually moved through from the 10,000 meters, then on the cross country, then onto the shorter road races of 10 miles and 15 kilometers, then the athlete who ran bravely in the Olympic Games in Athens by just sitting off the pace, having enough confidence in her pace judgment to come through. And there again, you can see checking her pace. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's got the information she needs and only only she knows how she feels but there two hours 17 minutes she's going to be very very close to Catherine de Reba, who's the second fastest athlete ever two hours 18 minutes and 47 seconds is the target for this athlete and if she does under two hours 18 minutes and 47 she'll become the second fastest female runner ever behind the great performances that we've seen on this course by Paula Radcliffe Dina Castor looks absolutely fantastic. She's gathering pace of anything. She's running and accelerating. She knows this is a chance. She's been blessed by the weather. She's taken the advantage of that weather and it's cooling her down, keeping the body cool as she tries hard. And she's checking her splits every couple of seconds, Steve. She knows exactly what's going on. She's being applauded here on the right hand side. If she looks up, which she probably won't, she would see Buckingham Palace. All she's interested in is her own split time. And as she swings round the corner here, into the mile the crowd will go crazy when they see the time it's slipping away though 18 22 23 can she beat the 47 that Catherine de Reba ran i think that time's they're uh, going to slip away from her the next target she looks behind i don't know why there's nobody anywhere near her 220 that magical mark only seven women have run inside 220 so far but whatever she ends up with this has been a superlative performance by dina Casta, the american who prepared herself so well for this one in Chicago this time set herself out with a time in mind 220 she will turn into the mile can see the finish line she keeps looking at her watch she's just got to get on with it now she's got to just pump those arms and knees if she can about 200 meters to go now and you'd normally expect them to cover that in about 40 seconds or so at this sort of pace if she can uh, just pick it up she's trying to get her arms moving Tina Castor, the Olympic bronze medalist. The victory is hers. Will she be rewarded with a historic 2.20 clocking? I think she's going to make it. The crowd are applauding a wonderful, wonderful performance by the American. She's controlled the latter half of this race completely. She's going to win the Flora London Marathon in a super, super time. Two hours, 19 minutes and about 35 seconds. A wonderful performance from Tina Castor brilliantly executed 
and she knows what that means. She's gone on to the all-time list. In fact, when we get that time confirmed, it could well be the fourth fastest time of all time behind Ender Eva, of course, Paula Radcliffe, and the Olympic champion, Noguchi. That is what... making it eight, finishing ahead of Ludmila Petrova of Russia and Susan Chepkamai of Kenya. Mari Yamauchi of Great Britain finished in sixth place. But let's now hear from the winner. Regina, congratulations. A great run and a great time. You've joined an exclusive group. Yes, I was very happy with the with the run today. The weather was perfect for marathoning. I, I thank the spectators still for, for coming out and being as enthusiastic as they were. There's a little drizzle out there on the course, but they were very enthusiastic, and they, they definitely help us runners as we go by. I guess you need that help because you were out on your own for quite a time, although you had the pacemakers, but, but out on your own. Yeah, and we can't overemphasize how much the, the support means out there along the course, the enthusiasm, the, the flora bangers, the, the drummers, the bands along the way. It really does help inspire us get to this finish line because it's a long trek. How does London compare with Chicago? Um, this was a fantastic race. They're obviously um, very exclusive um, races, these marathons. They've done so well. They all have great traditions. But this is one of the most spectacular finishes in the entire world. Uh, just a, a wonderful setting. It's interesting just watching you in the last sort of mile or so. You kept looking at your watch almost, you know, every, every few seconds. You knew how, how close you were to that. I don't know why I do that to myself. I, I cut it a little too close. And what felt like a sprint coming down to the finish line i'm sure it didn't look that good but uh, i was trying to dip under two hours 20 minutes and i, I just barely did it so I'm, I'm really thrilled did your final preparations change a bit when you heard that paula wasn't going to run because i know that was one of your motivations for coming here to take her on yes and uh, she's obviously the the target for everyone being the world record holder in this event she's very well respected and we're sorry that she wasn't out here today but she would have she would have given us a good run and I've just got to ask you if one story is true that I heard. I think you were running in Portugal, and halfway through the race, you swallowed a bee, it stung you, and you still carried on and, and continued in the race. Is that true? Yes, it was the World Cross Country Championships in Portugal, and uh, 500 meters into the race, a bee flew into my mouth and stung the back of my throat, and it closed up. I passed out on the course, and uh, but it's a, it's a team competition, so I, I got up and, and struggled to, to the finish line on, on behalf of my team, and the U.S. team ended up with a medal that day, so it was well worth the fight. <laughs> I think that just shows what a competitor you are. What's next for you? Um, I'm going to take a nice break right now, but I'll be looking forward to track season, running the 5,000 and 10,000 meters there. And be back here next year, maybe? I hope so. Good. Well done today. Congratulations on the time as well. Thank you, London. <laughs>